Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech and today I'm gonna to talk about the Hi-Fiman Sundara. This is not a new headphone. It's newer to me from like a in-depth experience having for long-term type of thing. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, the the Sundara has been out for a while, um, years actually. And there was even a slight revision to it two years ago where they basically upgraded the pad. They modified the pad shape a little bit, um, which did affect sound quality slightly, but overall it's been the same awesome headphone for a while. So I'm gonna do my own take on this headphone, compare it to others above and below the price range. Maybe you have one of these others and this will help kind of connect the dots or give you some form of understanding on how they stack up differently to each other. So the Sundara open back, open back on the side, I'll talk about that in case you're unaware of what that means. Um, it's $300. Now on the hi -Fi Man website, it said the retail price was higher, but now it's on sale for 300. It's pretty much always been three to $350. And there's a huge amount of competition in this price range. Now, um, starting with the basics. So I mentioned that this is open back. That means the outside of the driver itself or the ear cup is not sealed, it is vented. So this is all open here. There's obviously, you know, you get this nice little window to protect the magnet structure and everything. But the idea of an open back is it essentially lets the speaker breathe because all of the sound that's coming from the front and back is being let out and you're not hearing um, basically the reflections or because it's sealed, it's not altering the uh, frequencies of the driver. Um, the driver is free to behave as it wants without being impacted um, by the back of the ear cup like you would with a closed back or a vented semi-open back, that type of thing. So. Um, these have pros and cons. So an open back headphone can sound more natural tonality wise. It doesn't mean every open back is going to sound better than every closed back. Um, but with that naturalness and openness, the downsides um, is noise isolation in two ways. Whatever you play on this, especially at louder volumes because the sound is being let out on, on the back of the driver, other people around you will hear it. So if you're listening to these in a office environment, or you're listening to these at night in bed and your significant other is uh, sleeping next to you, they will hear that. And then conversely, if you're not in a quiet listening space and you're listening to music at a lower volume, let's say, you're gonna hear a lot of your listening space around you. So I tend to work in a quieter office. Um, I've done sound treatment in here, not only the stuff on the wall, but in the wall to soundproof it. And it's something as simple as if my computer is rendering like my big desktop and my fans are going, these don't do a great job at passive noise isolation. I'm gonna hear a lot of that fan noise. So if I'm doing something critical and the fans are making a lot of noise, this becomes an issue for me and it does impact the subtleness of the sound, you know, the softer notes, things like that. You lose some of that dynamic range because now it's blending in with your environment noise. So just keep that in mind. It's actually a big reason why I transitioned to a Mac because the fans are so quiet, it's almost inaudible and allows me to enjoy my music more. Now, as far as build quality and comfort goes, um, there's a lot to like and there's the whole long-term question mark thing, you know, how will this uh, hold up over time? I've had these for about two months now and I've used them off and on and I've compared it to a lot of the other headphones I've recently acquired. Um, so I can't speak to what two years of ownership will look like. And as with any product, your mileage may vary. You might have uh, an inexpensive product that lasts you years and you can buy a really expensive thing that causes nothing but issues. So I can only go by my initial feel, how it's worked for me and how it compares to some other headphones. This is an all metal build for the most part, you know, the headband itself, the ear cup, this is a metal premium finished headphone. It feels nice in your hands, it feels robust. And at the $300 price range, you, you would actually think it was more expensive because of the materials. Now it weighs over 370 grams, so it has a little bit of weight to it, but thanks to the suspension headband, it's actually still quite comfortable. There's no swivel. So as far as comfort goes, normally I have a huge issue with that. There's some gaming headsets I've reviewed, like the Astro A20s, that don't feel right on my head. Those have a very flat symmetrical pad. That's not the case with this. And because of this, um, the way the ear pad shape is, it's not flat and it's designed to sit in seal around your ear, which actually helps a little bit with your sound quality as well. The 2020 variant actually measures a little bit better and most people feel that it sounds better. So I'll get into sound quality, but overall, because of this headband design, 
and the upgraded pads, I find this Sundara very comfortable. Clamp force is in the medium range. It's not extremely lightweight. Um, it does put a little bit more pressure on your head than some of the other ones, like the Edition XS, which is right here. I can talk about that after. Um, but I found the clamp force to still be very comfortable because this is an open back. I didn't really have any problems with overheating on the center part of my ear. This hybrid pad material can create a little bit of warmth around your ear. That's, um, again, one of those... Uh, unique situations where your mileage may vary. It just depends on how it wears on you. But I did find it very comfortable and you do get an adjustable yoke. So you can adjust the height to make sure it's resting right at the sweet spot. Because these aren't incredibly tall, you really want to position it just right and then you don't have to do anything with the headband. I wear a hat for the reviews and videos. I don't wear a hat when I'm doing all my listening, but um, I can tell you when I put this thing on, I can wear this headphone for a very long time and very comfortably, and I think that does help with perceived sound quality. It sounds stupid, but if you always, if you feel like the headphone doesn't fit right, I feel like mentally it can negatively impact your sound quality because it's a distraction. Whereas this, even though I have the slightly stronger clamp force, a little medium, moderate, just barely over moderate, um, because overall it feels so nice on my head, that's less of a distraction. I could focus more on the music side. As far as what you get in the box, you get the manual, the nice little hi fi Men book that gives you kind of the backstory on planar magnetic technology, and then you have this nice cable. So they use crystalline copper cables, and you know, this is all rubber. The microphonics actually aren't that bad on this, so you don't hear a lot of cord noise being transferred into the headphone. And of course, you have this detachable quarter inch adapter. There's no balance connection on uh, included with this, which is again, it's $300. I don't know if a lot of people are gonna go balanced on a $300 headphone. However, it does use the standard 3.5 millimeter plug on each side. So um, I have a balance cable that works fine on this because it's the same cable that's used in the Aria Stell, the HE1000 SE, et cetera. Now, planar magnetic technology is kind of a different way of producing sound. Most people are familiar with dynamic speakers, which is like, you know, when you have your big speakers at home, your home theater stuff, you pop the grill off and you see that round speaker. That's a dynamic speaker. You have a magnet behind and there's a voice coil that electrical current flows through. And because of the way the, the current is flowing through that voice coil, it reacts with magnetic fields, which is that magnet behind it. It makes the driver move forward and back. The way a planar magnetic uh, driver works is the diaphragm or, or what's producing the sound, which is incredibly thin on a lot of uh, planar magnetics, hi fi Men says that the diaphragm is like a sliver of a human hair thick. That's how thin the driver is that's producing the sound. But it's suspended between magnets. And this really thin film has the electrical current flowing through it. And again, based off what's flowing through that uh, transducer, it reacts again with the magnetic field around it, and it moves. What all that translates to is typically you have very fast transients with a planar magnetic, which is gonna lead me into the sound quality. Um, Fast transients means you have fast attack and decay. Now, that can be a good or bad thing. Sometimes you want it to have a slower decay. You want it to have a little bit more of a natural presence around your ear. You know, think of it as um, when you strike, uh, let's see, let's think of just some natural musical instruments. You have a guitar in a room or a drum in a room and you either, you know, pluck the string or, or hit the drum. Um, I'm speaking very basically here, but your room is gonna add a little bit of reverb to it. That's also why you get such amazing sound stage and stuff like that. But it's not like the second the note ends, it just stops. And part of that is coming from the decay of your room. Now, headphones have to factor that in and drivers can make a big difference. In addition to all the other materials they put around it to shape that sound. And planars typically attack or you know, ramp up to that note quicker and they also uh, decay, which means they're cutting the sound quicker. You get less of that ringing effect. Now, some people may love it. Some people may find it a little bit unnatural. It's very different, but I can tell you a lot of people when they hear planar magnetics for this first time are surprised at how much detail and clarity um, typically that you get. It is a noticeably different sound profile and the Sundara executes it honestly so close to without a fault that it really starts making you wonder how much more can you get beyond this price range? Because uh, from a measurement standpoint, the Sundara is incredible. It's relatively flat from 30 Hertz to your upper mid range. 
where it kind of follows um, the Harman curve, the Harman 2018 curve fairly closely. And because of that, and because it's a fairly smooth transition, you don't have a lot of unnatural uh, resonances or you know second harmonics. So when you, basically the timbre or tonality is more natural. When you have a smoother line, instruments, the way they ring out, the way they play, or the way the vocal sounds, doesn't have these weird spikes or decreases based off frequency. It sounds more natural to what you would expect to hear in real life. And the Sundara, because of the way it's it's tuned and how flat it is, relatively speaking, and it extends so low, it gets the 30 hertz without really having any roll off, which is great for an open back of this price range. Because typically when you look at the Sennheiser, this is the HD 6XX, and then this is the 560S, they have more of a roll off that happens at a higher frequency as well. So if you want some of that sub bass, it's not going to give you the kick or slam as a really powerful close back or a larger uh, planar magnetic driver, but it gets surprisingly deep. Now, because of the way this planar is producing bass, I'm, I'm going to just be straight up. It's fairly intoxicating. You know, it's one of those things where it's giving you just enough warmth and little extra, you know, energy in that that deeper bass region. And it sounds so damn good that it's like it's teasing you like you almost want a little bit more, but you don't really ever touch the EQ to add more. It's just done so tastefully well um, that it's not it's not like it's taking away or changing the way the song was supposed to sound either. It's kind of reproducing it faithfully. But what you get and the way the bass sounds is noticeably better than headphones below it in this price range. It's not so much about amplitude and volume, it's just the way the bass sounds. Um, when you compare it to something like the HD6XX, which has an incredible mid-range, I'll compare the two more directly, the 6XX sounds great. There is a decent amount of you know, bass performance. It's, it's more of a, a cleaner, flatter sounding headphone, but when you upgrade or, or switch to the Sundara, it sounds noticeably more powerful, almost like you know you have a little bit more extra up top. When you crank the volume, or if you add a couple decibels in the bass region, it feels like this is going to handle that better at louder volumes, and it does. It has a better power handling if you start pushing it, which leads you into you know, more capable amplifiers. So uh, I absolutely love the bass on this, and unlike some other hi fi -man headphones, it doesn't follow the signature harm or hi fi -man curve. So the mids are relatively flat, and unlike the Aria Stealth, which has a dip around 2000 hertz, only to spike back up as you approach three and up um, to create more of a sense of airiness and soundstage, uh, this has a more smooth transition. It doesn't have that dip. It lifts up, and it, again, like I said, it follows the Harman curve relatively closely. Um, to me, this is one of my favorite planar magnetic headphones I've used simply because the tonality and the frequency response is so damn good. Now, when you get into the soundstage and your imaging performance, I'm going to discuss this in two ways because I know I have a huge gamer following on my channel, so I will talk about gaming. Um, the soundstage is great on this. It's still better than most or almost all closebacks I've reviewed or listened to in the past. Openbacks typically have a better soundstage. Speakers, real full-size speakers, have a much better soundstage. But this isn't like a class-leading soundstage or imaging headphone in this price range. The imaging's not bad. Um, it layers texture as well, and you can still get really good clarity and, you know, between vocals and instruments happening at the same time. It's still easy to distinguish and enjoy that level of music. But when it comes to the dead center image, you know, I'll basically play a track in, in a mono configuration, um, it, it's not as pinpoint centered as some other headphones in this price range. The HD 560S has a slightly better sounding soundstage to me, even though this is $200 or less, a little bit more open soundstage. The uh, Edition XS has a better soundstage. And obviously the Aria Stealth, I grabbed it just to kind of, I guess, include one of their more premium products. That's a $1,600 headphone. Noticeably wider soundstage, partly because the drivers are much larger, so you're getting sound coming at you from a, a wider physical standpoint, but it's also tuned to sound that way. Um, when it comes to gaming performance, that imaging and sound stage, it'll still sound good for gaming. However, don't buy the Sundara to think you're gonna have the best possible footstep awareness under 500 bucks. If you're really concerned with pinpoint accuracy on frequency uh, on imaging, 
and soundstage for let's say a first person shooter like Battle Royale, then you look at the HD 560S, which is incredible for FPS, or per request, I bought one of these, the Bayer Dynamic uh, Tiger 300R. Um, I will be reviewing this and kind of doing a head to head later. Uh, those image and present physical awareness better if you're concerned with that type of thing to that level. The Edition XS from Hi-Fi Men has better imaging and soundstage and it comes at a $500 premium. So while not the greatest, they're still good and I still find the soundstage to be a little bit better and more open than the HD 6XX. Now when I, if I were to compare it, um, the 6XX to me is like kind of like become my new a uh, flat measurement tool against everything else I'm listening to, partly because the mid-range is so damn good on it. Um, I don't get the same bass performance, and the treble is just a little bit darker. So if you know you want like a more of a reference flatter sound, these aren't monitor style headphones. You know, you could consider the Bayer 1990 Pros. Um, but when I listen to things at louder volumes, these come across as a little bit more subdued. So if you don't want like a cymbal or a triangle, you know, like a metallic instrument or um, to sound as forward as this does. This basically like, was it Tom, I forgot his now, last name, he gives it an H, but the lead singer from, um, uh, wow, <laughs> Radiohead. This is what I get when I go on scripted. So um, his voice is an upper register, kind of like uh, Muse. And when you compare it to the HD 6XX and then you switch to the Sundara, it's like they added one or two decibels to their voice. That frequency range just steps forward a little bit. When you listen to something like the song Exile, which has Bon Iver and um, Taylor Swift in it, their voices are, I don't want to say shrill or harsh, but they're just a little bit more so than the Sennheiser 6XX, which doesn't really make it as exciting sounding but it's very easy to listen to. It just sounds a little bit more flat. I guess a little bit more analog if that's even a, I don't like using that to describe sound quality. It just sounds a little bit more subdued. So it's really up to you what kind of sound quality you want. If you want, if you're a bass head, um, then maybe consider a closed back or a larger planar magnetic because something like the Edition XS, which I've mentioned a few times, but just to compare, the Edition XS is $500. I'm gonna be reviewing this directly, but there's noticeably, uh, there's a warmer sound profile to this and it has a little bit more airiness up top. Um, I feel like both of these can use just a slight amount of EQ. Thankfully, both of these take EQ really well. Now you don't wanna to go to an extreme, uh, but this for the $500 is basically giving a little bit more sound stage, a little bit more bass definition. Um, in a very different design physically. These do swivel because this uses the Deva style uh, headband. You still have a telescoping headband, but I find this headband much more comfortable. And these pads, although they're large and they look nice, they feel a little bit more firm on your ear. They're basically designed just to rest on, not hug nice and warmly around your ear like the Sundara. So I actually think there's pros and cons to both. When I put the XS on, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it's a better sounding headphone. There's more bass then things just open up a little bit more. Um, but for just plugging in and listening to music, this is more of a music headphone and you can play games on it and it's gonna sound great. It's just not gonna localize as well as something better geared towards FPS, which to me sacrifice some of the sound characteristics that I like for music listening. So it just kind of depends what your priorities are. At the end of the day, I actually, I love the Sundara. Uh, it, it, it sounded much better than I expected it to at $300. I've used them a ton partly because of the comfort. And again, just with a slight EQ to the upper treble and just a little bit of a lift in the low bass, they sound incredible to me. Um, I really like them a lot. Now I'm not using them for my competitive FPS stuff or anything, but just for listening to music all day while I work, they sound great. And for $300, you're gonna be hard pressed to find anything that can match this in this price range. I think if you were to save money, go for the 560S or the HD 6XX, which is $200. The 650 is very similar to this and that's 300. So to me, I would rather just get the Sundara at that point. Otherwise spend a little bit more for the XS if you want the sound stage and the bigger bass handling. My JDS Atom stack was one of the best sounding ones on this because I actually got the, the shit or the niche piety. 
which is a new $150 amp, like limited production run. I tried it on a topping stack. I tried it on my hi fi -Man amp, which sounded great, but I loved how neutral the JDS Lab Atom stack was, and I felt like it just let these kind of do their thing a little bit better. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. Just have good, clean sound, a good, clean sounding amp, like a Magni Modi stack for 200 or a JDS Atom stack for 200. And for 500 bucks all in with a little bit of EQ, you're getting like 98% of what the audiophile community looks for in sound quality. It really is that good without spending all that crazy amount of money. So I absolutely love the Sundara. I'm gonna review the Sundara closed back soon. Basically, the only thing they share in common is the name. They don't sound the same, they're not built the same, they look totally different, but I will be talking about that as well. I absolutely love these. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you so much for the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, as you can tell, I have a lot of more, a lot more headphones I'll be releasing reviews on soon. So thank you as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.